see if we get anyone coming from the nursery. So there we are. Come on in, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Oh, good morning. That's better. All right. Now it's foggy out there. Maybe you're not awake. So is anybody headed to camp today? Anybody off to camp today? I guess not today. Next week, huh? All right. Well, it's good to see all of you. Um, so does anyone have an idea what this is? I better stand up so that everybody else can see what I'm holding up. Ugh, I got my fingers stuck. You know what that is? You don't use this every day? <gasps> I have one taker. Pencil. A pencil. Well, it's uh, used with a pencil often. No engineering students. <gasps> An eraser. An eraser, no. It's heavy. Here, feel how heavy that is, June. It is heavy. Well, our scripture lesson today is about a, what is this? Ah. Well, obviously, you got to be a certain age to know what a plumb bob is. <laughs> of course, this is one of those things with all this laser stuff now. I don't know if anybody ever actually uses one. I actually learned how to use one of these as a kid. So the Egyptians invented this as a form of measurement. And in fact, you know about the Great Pyramids? You ever seen the pictures of the Great Pyramids? Yeah. Plumb bob was what helped them to build the Great Pyramids. It is a very simple way of figuring out whether something is level or true, all right? And uh, so there's all kinds of different ways that you can use this to figure out whether if you're building a wall, actually, you can uh, just let that hang down the side of the wall, and you can tell if the wall's starting to go one way or another that it shouldn't, just simply by having the plumb bob there. So in our lesson today, God tells uh, Amos, his prophet, that he wants them, he is going to put a plumb bob uh, next to them to see whether or not they are true, whether they are doing the things that they need to do in this world. Um, so it's important that we have people in our lives that help us make sure we're staying, staying on the right path, people who help us to do things that are moral and ethical, that are spiritually true. Um, and uh, sometimes we don't like <laughs> having people like that because we want to do things our way. So is anybody going to watch the World Cup? Yeah, yeah, Ben. So what does that referee have in his pocket? He's got cards. That's right. You see on the soccer pitch, he's the plumb bob <laughs> because uh, players uh, in all kinds of different sports, uh, they may want to be one of doing things their way and not the right way. And so they're the ones that hold, uh, make sure those players play the way that they should. It's important for us to know that, that God, um, God has his hand on us. And one of our desires is to be as true as we possibly can. Because if you uh, don't make things straight and true, um, well, if you're building a wall, that wall's going to fall over eventually. And so we need to build our lives in ways that reflect God's grace and love. So now you know what a plumb bob is. Let's have a prayer. Lord, thank you for all these wonderful young people. We are so grateful for the gift that they are in our lives. We pray that you will... Uh, Watch over them and help them to build lives that are true in your spirit and in your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for coming up. We are grateful for the opportunity to be together, to worship together, and with that opportunity comes... Uh, the opportunity also for us to give our gifts. I invite our ushers to wait upon us.
wise and loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for the opportunity to be together. Lord, we are grateful for these beautiful summer months, for the opportunities to be outside and enjoy your creation, for the, the chance that comes in the summer to be with family and loved ones. Lord, we pray that we never take for granted the beauty and grace that is around us each and every day. Lord, we pray for those who are participating and volunteering at the Door County Triathlon today. We ask for their safety um, and that they have a wonderful experience of being out in this beautiful place that we live. Gracious God, we are mindful of those in our midst who are in need of your care, your healing, those in our church family and our community are in treatment for illness. Lord, we pray especially this day for the family of Steve Schmelzer, former high school teacher at Sturgeon Bay. Lord, Steve was, was killed in an accident this past week, taken from us far too young. We are grateful for all the students that he loved and served and the difference that he made in our lives and our community. But it is difficult when we lose people to accident. We pray that you'll be with his family and be with us. Be with us now as we look into your word and we pray that you will open our hearts to your teaching. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated.
Today's scripture reading is taken from the book of Amos, chapter 7, verses 7 through 15. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing by a wall that had been built true to plumb, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord asked me, what do you see, Amos? A plumb line, I replied. Then the Lord said, look, I'm setting a plumb line among my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. The high places of Isaac will be destroyed, and the sanctuaries of Israel will be ruined. With my sword, I will rise against the house of Jeroboam. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent a message to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos is raising a conspiracy against you in the very heart of Israel. The land cannot bear all his words, for this is what Amos is saying. Jeroboam will die by the sword, and Israel will surely go into exile, away from their native land. Then Amaziah said to Amos, Get out, you seer. Go back to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there, and do your prophesying there. Don't prophesy anymore at Bethel, because this is the king's sanctuary and the temple of the kingdom. Amos answered Amaziah, I was neither a prophet nor a prophet's son, but I was a shepherd, and I also took care of sycamore fig trees. But the Lord took me from tending the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people, Israel. I was taught how to use a plumb line by my father. Since in our lesson today, God used that visual aid, I brought my own along as well. You'll see it to my right. Left, excuse me, you're right. Um, This uh, is a painting that my brother painted from a photograph, and that is my father, Milton. And in the painting, you'll see that he is rebuilding a wall. That wall was underneath the spring kitchen at one of the houses on our farm. I imagine at some point that wall had been straight and true, but by the time the house came into our possession, it had an immense bow right in the middle, kind of like me. (laughs) And after quite a while of looking at that wall and watching his anxiety rise that the kitchen was going to slide right off right down the hillside, for this house is on a very steep hillside. Dad decided he needed to tackle the impending disaster. As was always seems to be the case when working with my father, uh, it was a really hot week. A very hot week of chipping, rotting cement out, liberating all those old stones, getting them ready again, and then rebuilding the wall. I truly believe that my father was never happier, never happier than when he was slinging cement from a trowel. In fact, I think if you look closely, I know I do when I look at this, I can hear him whistling. Now, this was not the first wall that I'd worked on with my dad. Over the years, he taught me, though, how to use a plumb line, how to make a wall straight. My father was a plumb line kind of guy. He was an engineer who walked around with a slide ruler in his pocket. Now, there are a lot of people in life who like to just eyeball things. (laughs) I'm one of those. (laughs) Just like, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, we're the people who squint, we kind of look, and then we declare, looks good to me. (laughs) Well, when it came to building stuff, my father would consider looks good to me as the four most dangerous words in the world. Just because it looks good doesn't mean that it is. We all have different perspectives, different ways of looking at things. We have ways of rationalizing what makes them look good, don't we? But here's the thing, friends, you cannot argue with a plumb line. What is plumb is what is vertical, 
what is true. It has nothing to do with what you want it to be or what you would hope it would be. Either it is true or it's not. In our lesson, God had had enough of the excuses proposed by his wayward and disobedient children in Israel. So he called a righteous man, Amos, to speak his truth to them. And, of course, we know a person who does that is known as a prophet. And so we have Amos. He takes Amos to a wall to visualize his point. Using the plumb line, God shows Amos that the wall is true, and he says that he will measure his people the same way, already knowing that they are pretty crooked. And he warns them, I am not going to spare you. I am not going to ignore your bad behavior any longer. Looks good to me. Is not going to cut it. So, who holds the plumb line in our lives? I was grateful because my father was always such a person for me. He exasperated me immensely. Because there were so many times when I just wanted to say those four dangerous words and move on. But, but he, as a spiritual and moral plumb line, demanded more from me. And the reason why it made such an impact on me is because he was consistent about this To the best of his ability in all areas of his life, he sought for things to be true. I have been blessed to have others, like my father as well, who have helped me to stay true. Have you? Have you those people? I hope so. We live in a time where I think people are very uncertain about what is true. Not sure if there is anyone or anything that can be counted on to keep things the way they need to be. But friends, things never change in this regard. (laughs) God called up Amos because the political and religious authorities of his time wouldn't accept the truth that was being presented to them. You know, it's important to note here, God's beef with the Jewish people was because he had heard the cries of the widows and the orphans. He was enraged because of the treatment of the poor and the powerless. He saw no grace in the land. So though through Amos he sends this message, look, I am setting a plumb line among you, my people Israel. I will spare you no longer. The high places of Isaac will be destroyed. The sanctuaries of Israel will be ruined. And with my sword, I will rise up against the house of Jeroboam, the king. Amaziah, the priest, hears this. And he tells the king, the land cannot bear his words. (laughs) So let me put this in contemporary terms. The priest cries out, fake news. We don't believe you. You're biased. Get out, you seer. Get back to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there. Do your prophesying there. Don't prophesy anymore here at Bethel. Amaziah accused Amos of being a person who was a professional prophet, who was politically motivated, and therefore he couldn't be trusted. I love Amos' response here. No prophet am I, no son of a prophet am I, but a herdsman I am. I didn't get this job through politics. It's not my family business. I'm just a guy who tends sheep and looks after fig trees. But God called me to speak his word. So here's the line, and you don't measure up. Friends, as the story plays out, what Amos had to say was true. And judgment came. And there is nothing fake about the news that he brought. And that is the thing about truth that we have to remember, friends, when things get confusing and difficult, that truth stands the test of time. 
We can deny it or make excuses, but eventually whatever we build in this life, whether it is a wall or a career or relationships, they will collapse if they are not built on what is right. Sometimes that means we need to spend time in our lives going back and doing what Dad was doing right here. Through hard work, we need to to try to make what was wrong right again. Hard work like repenting and confessing and making amends and building trust or just being honest. Honest with others and sometimes the toughest one, to be honest with ourselves. This is our personal work as followers of Jesus. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we believe that he is at work in us as we desire to be more and more like him. But there is also this same type of work that needs to be done in this world. Who will stand today for what is ethical and right? Who will stand for kindness? Who will stand for the weak and the powerless? Who is willing to hold up the plumb line? Will it be you? Will it be me? Will we stand when we see that something wrong is happening? Will we speak when our voice is needed? Are we the people who God is calling to build lasting walls, walls of love and kindness and justice. I hope and pray that we are. For there should not be any fear in this work, but there should be gratitude. Gratitude that we have the confidence in Christ our Savior, that the world that we work for is his kingdom. His kingdom which will have no end. Amen.